Good afternoon. <laughs> I've been uh, kind of working on um, a video for a while. And so I, I also have been working actually on the, um, the channel it, itself. And my son uh, was helping me, especially we really got some really good things going yesterday. So I'm hoping the, the quality and, and you know, <laughs> production, the content and the context would, will be better. Uh, so I know that my last video, I actually had talked about the hints that I like to use and I, you know, I keep seeing, you know, like today I was getting, my preparation was for, um, the McDonald's and I haven't done McDonald's, even though my last name is McDonald, my maiden name is McDonald. And, um, and my brother, when he first started doing the genealogy with me, he wanted to he wanted to do the McDonald's and that was his whole kind of goal. And so, uh, <laughs> so it, it, our McDonald's get really very interesting also because they very shortly go back, you know, from being out in the West um, where they were back to Michigan and then, and then into Canada. So, and then it was French Canadian. <laughs> so there's a lot of challenges with this. And so, I think we'll be, you know, covering this unless somebody makes a just suggestion and and wants to hear more about like an all or a chase or some of the other surnames. And I I plan on contacting more of the DNA match people and and um so so actually when I started my um my channel we had actually my son had found it but it was really a good um domain name and it was family branching which I loved. And but we haven't we hadn't pulled that into uh, a Facebook group pages, um, you know, a group place in Facebook, and so it's there now. So if you go into to Marsha McDonald and you go down to the group, you can join the family branching, and um, and the 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 words that we came up with yesterday, and what, you know, I I don't know. I mean, it's really fun to do this, but you know, it's genealogy connections and um, communities and conversations is is kind of the goal to to this, to be able to get to the point where we can talk to each other through the mailbox or through a comment or, um, you know, and really we'll start working together on this. And I think I'm, that's very exciting to me. But we actually did some, um, if you go into Facebook, you'll see where it says family branching. And if you click on it, um, you'll see the, the logo that is a rock um, that my brother found when he was out hunting several years ago. And it had been polished by the tires of a log truck as the loggers were going over the road. And, and it was carnelian and it was um, uh, very pretty. And so my brother picked it up, but then when he took it home, he didn't quite know for sure how he was going to cut it or how he was going to polish it. But as it ends up, it is the logo of my um, channel. And uh, yeah, I kind of challenge you all go look at it because it's phenomenal. There's a, a magic to it that's just gorgeous. And then the other thing that I'm going to be incorporating in um, is my complete attire. And uh, I played the bagpipes in high school. And I have mentioned that, I think, in some of the beginning videos. But I, growing up, I had no idea, you know, that even, you know, it was Kelso. Kelso was the name of the town. Kelso High School, The our mascot was a Scotty dog. And so it's, it's <laughs> you know, for me to come full Full around and and uh, remember that I played the bagpipes and had the full full outfit and so this would have been when I was eighteen and so um, so that's going to be a part of it too so watch watch it and, you know um, where it shows up in in the video but but basically today I wanted to really start with the McDonald's and and I I decided um, to start with our dad and. Uh, his name was John Douglas McDonald, and he was an only child. And when I had kind of covered, you know, he married Ella 
chase and she was an only child. So you you know, it, it is kind of different sometimes than when I was working on the all nuts, all nuts and there was like 11 people. But so I wanted to start out with um, my dad and he was born in Jackson, uh, Michigan in 1921. And then he, um, you know, he was he was a preemie baby, and so he ended up he's, he as a when he went in the military, he was like five foot two, I think, and weighed about one hundred and fifteen to one hundred and seventeen pounds. And um, but when they brought him home from the hospital, they put him in a like a little shoe box with little cotton balls and stuff. He was very very, you know, he was lucky that he actually lived and that's probably why they didn't try to have any more kids um, because it was so scary for them to have such a, a, you know, that's a very small baby back then, you know, he didn't have a NICU uh, (laughs) ward to go to or uh, any of that. They just put him in this little cardboard box and took him home and fed him. And, and he was lucky enough to, (laughs) to make it. So, um, I I know in different videos too, and I have talked about military, but you know that's also when those those hints is like looking at both of these two men. So his dad's name was John Kenneth McDonald, and and my dad went into the army, and his dad was in the army, and um, he was uh, twenty years old when he signed up for the draft, and at that point he was working at a gas station. And, um, so then, then they, he enlisted and he went into the army and they sent him back to Virginia, Warrington, Virginia, I guess was a base. And so he started his military training back there, but because of a, a situation with his dad, there was an emergency and he had to go back home, uh, to our hometown. And so when he got back there, he went ahead and married this girlfriend he had had for a while, which is my mother. And, and then they, you know, she, she went with him when they went back to the base and, but the base was his tra- training started out that he was, a, 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 I was going to say a ham operator. I mean, that's what it's called on, on, you know, what he did for years afterwards, but, but he actually did a lot of the <laughs> did, 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 da, 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 um, coding during the war. But when he got there, um, he had no idea that that his company was going to leave while he was on this emergency leave. So when he got back there, then they gave him other jobs. And there was always the names of the jobs. Um, I wrote them that made a little joke. It was like one of them was a, a shovel man or a hoist man. And these guys probably did, you know, a lot of the training area at the base or whatever. So he didn't go overseas. And uh, we used to, well, he used to kind of tease about it in a way that he just pushed a wheelbarrow. But, but you know, he had to do that kind of um, civil work almost around in the base. So his military life was pretty pretty much normal in a way. And so then my sister was born back there. And, um, and then eventually he was, you know, he came back from the military. And he was, he was in there for a number of years. Uh, back there. And so when he came back, he went to the mill. <laughs> and for the ones of you that are getting to know me, I mean, you know, I I like to look at the occupation of, of a person and I like to look at how dangerous, you know. So when I first look, you know, look at the fact that he was at the mill, that which is a very kind of much more higher level of danger than um would be in other jobs. And so he took the civil service test as, as a young man and he got a job at the post office. And and he his whole career over 20 years he worked for the government and at the post office and that was a very low income um possibility for danger. So, you know, he he pretty much bypassed some of the you know, still in the mill town and there was a lot of chemicals in the air. And, and when you smell the chemicals, you know, everybody would laugh because it was like, oh, it smells like money to me uh, because they were paid good, good um, wages at most of the mills, but it was still, you know, very dangerous. And, and a lot of people really don't know what the side effects will ever show, you know, in regards to all that (laughs) smelly 
chemical stuff that came from the number of mills. I mean, it was the Columbia River, and along the Columbia River was just mill, 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 mill. And even aluminum, plywood, um, paper, you know, uh, uh, anything you can think of to do with, with uh, logging and the, the timber coming out. And as far as um, I know, and then my sister and I actually had a conversation a little bit ago on the phone and, uh, you know, trying to figure out for sure why the McDonald's left Jackson and came came out that direction. But um, most of them came for the jobs and, and and there were some jobs in Michigan, but I think they were kind of like getting to the point where they were harder to find jobs in the camp logging area. And so they they came back and um, moved into, uh, and it was a place I, I, I knew as a child, but just since I've been doing genealogy, it kind of intrigues me because it was called Rainbow Edition. It was a housing development. And my grandparents had a very nice house there. And um, so he then my dad retired and um, he had hobbies. He he had he he played the trumpet the trombone the you know any musical instrument just about and he played by ear now I played the bagpipe I played clarinet for many many years but I play by what with the music and he could he just plays by his ear and he was in a marching band for a while but then he um, eventually he had a stroke and it pretty much um, paralyzed him on the left side and. Um, and then he kept having small strokes and it just kind of went on for about five years, I think, before he actually passed. And, um, and I, ha and that's like my hint number five is always, if you could find out from, from your chart notes, you know, what they die of, that's really good. If you have a, um, <laughs> a diagnosis and so, you know, it was, it was cerebral thrombosis, which is a stroke. And um, it was interesting, and, and, and I'm going to switch over to his dad, but his dad's diagnosis also was a stroke. And and there's other people on in that line of, of my relatives that have died of strokes. And so like a month ago when I went to the doctor, I always tell the doctor, you know, um, I, I have, a, you know, a line of that. But, you know, so the genetics that I got from my dad is one thing. And then the genetics on my mom, my mom was 85 when she died and she really kind of died of nothing. She was kind of got to the point. It was, you know, all her friends were dead <laughs> and she was the eldest person in the family. And I think she just kind of, she had a, she had a painful hip, but she wasn't a candidate for a hip replacement. So yeah, she just died, but of nothing. And so there's, so that's all also. So I, I like to look at the DNA and the uh, genetic part of it. So his dad was born in Alpena, Michigan. And Alpena is like kind of like across from Canada. And so they would have just crossed the water, I'm sure. I don't think they would have dro drove around, but I think they just probably took one of those long boats or something like that from Canada into Michigan. And I don't know why they went from Alpena down to Jackson for sure, but that's where my mom and dad met. My, uh, my, well, that's where my grandma met her husband because she was like a, uh, she worked in a movie theater. And um, my dad met my mom through um, school. And it was interesting because there's also this theme about Kelso High School and they had the pictures of all the graduates and, and it was a very old building at the time, but it was like he, I could go around and around in the different corridors. I could find their pictures of them when they were in high school. So it was kind of a, a unique thing also. So, um, so John Kenneth, he, he immediately when they moved out there to uh, the Kelso Rainbow Edition area. He actually went to work at, as a millwright at the mill. See, so there's all, the mill's a draw. Maybe that's the conversation they had with the people, you know, but some of them did work in the camp, the logging camps, and then, and then the mills. And it was good money. I mean, it's still good money, but my brother graduated from um, high school in the same, um, you know, in Kelso High School, but then he went to work uh, at 
warehouser, a mill, and then he went to Vietnam. Then when he came back, he went back to the mill and he's retired and has a nice retired, you know, pension. So my grandfather, John Kenneth, um, he, I don't know how long he, he worked there, but he got a job uh, dredging and um, it, a form of construction work, but it was dredging out this whole area of a man-made lake. So there were sloughs out there and water and nasty stuff in Longview, Washington, but one of his jobs, and it's a beautiful lake. If you ever have a chance to go to Longview, Washington, it was a planned city and they took those sloughs and then made them into this. And that's where the fireworks are and all kinds of activities. And, you, you know, you can do your exercising around it and it's it's just beautiful. So so he worked there for a long time. But when he was 51, then he had his first stroke. Now, he, they sent him uh, down to um, VA in Vancouver, Washington, which is really across the water from Portland, Oregon. And then then at some point, and I have pictures, and my sister and I was talking about that today too, because we would go we would drive, but there was a place in Medford VA in which was about halfway down through Oregon. We'd drive and drive and drive and drive and drive and drive. And then he would hide from us because he he couldn't walk completely, he couldn't talk, you know, the stroke just makes you kind of incapable and and he was Henri and he so he could hide from us and as a little girl and I mean a little girl I can remember doing that drive down there and then nobody could find him but then later you know when we went through more pictures we found some pictures where he came out and held our hand and stuff but I don't as you know he he didn't speak to me he never never spoke to me um so so then from there, he, <laughs> there was a nursing home really close to our home. And so somebody decided that they would put him in that nursing home and he didn't last there very long. And we and my sister, I couldn't remember when this happened, but there was a, a situation that somebody, he hit somebody with their cane. And I think that's when they moved him then up to Stillicum and Stillicum is a mental hospital. And of course, he couldn't talk or explain anything or, you know, whatever happened. But they decided he was, you know, uh, had had to go to this mental institution. But at some point, somebody was able to communicate enough and find out uh, and verify the story about him hitting somebody with a cane and found out that he, he, they had stolen his wallet. So then they took him out of the mental hospital and they took him back to a, a VA hospital in Tacoma, Washington. And that's where he passed from. So from that, you know, basically his whole life, he lived in VA hospitals or in nursing homes or, and then, and then my grandma had lived alone that whole time. And then when he did die, <laughs> you know, it was really kind of strange because then they sent us his body. And when we went to look, you know, we didn't know who that was at all, especially as, as a younger person, you know, but it was, um, they had a Catholic mass for him and, and we buried him, but um, it was kind of a, like a hard life for, you know, it's, you know, my dad was older when he had his stroke. So there was not that whole, like his whole life. And of course there was more, you know, ways of taking care of him by then than like, you know, grandpa was lucky in a way that he was in the military because then he was, had this eligibility with the VA. So um, I think that kind of covers what I was going to cover today. And I hope to continue with the McDonald's because uh, there's going to be a lot of fun, I think, in the Canadian records and the French. Now, one of my other surname people I actually have communication with, but in Canada, and um, it, but they're in the English part, but the, the French part is, but I just heard recently that um, Ancestry actually has released a lot of Canadian um, records more. And, and of course, like John McDonald, <laughs> you know, there's Alex McDonald and, and Angus McDonald. And y y yeah, it gets real interesting. And so um, I'm looking forward to the challenge. And, and uh, so, yeah, if you, like this, just 
push the little button and like it or if you want to subscribe i'm going to be around if anybody wants to leave me any comments and um i'm going to be moving in a couple months and so you know there'll probably be a different background and a <laughs> i want to do some videos outdoors <laughs> but um anyway so have a good evening bye bye